Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, I'm Thunder, and today we're going to be creating an options menu for our game. You can see here, I have an options button, and when I go ahead and click on it, it displays the menu. Here are my volume and graphics settings, and you can see I can just move them around, and the volume I can lower it, and when I click apply, you can hear it actually applies. So, let's go ahead and get started. Here, I have the main menu I created on the main menu tutorial. Now, you don't have to watch that tutorial, all we need to do, really, is just a button. For that, you can right click. Go to UI, go to Legacy, Button, and there you go, you have a button. In my case, I'm just going to duplicate one of mine, and then inside of it, I'm going to change the text to be Options. Then, go ahead and create an empty game object inside your canvas, which you're going to call Options Menu. If you have something like a main menu here, make sure that first goes the main menu, and then goes the Options Menu. Inside here, we're going to go ahead and create a new image, so go to UI, Image, and it's going to be your background. I'm going to set the width to be 1920 and the height 1080. This will automatically block the access to all the other buttons. In my case, I'm just going to go ahead and set it up really quickly, and I will show you how to do it in a moment. Now that you have your background, go ahead and right-click on the Options menu, go all the way down to UI, and create a slider. This one is going to be for graphics quality. Once you have configured your slider to the colors that you want, the next step that you need to do is go over here to the graphics slider, and the minimum value and the max value, leave it as they are. But over here where it says whole numbers, mark it as true. This will make it so that there's no float values. For the max value, this is going to be your highest graphics setting. So go over here to the top left on edit, project settings, and look for quality. Over here, in my case, I only have three levels. The first level, which in this case is high fidelity, this will be level zero, and this will be level one and two. In my case, they're opposite, so I need to rearrange them. So just drag it down and that will automatically rearrange it. Now that we know this, basically the way this is going to work is that minimum value, which is zero, when our slider is at zero, that will be balanced. When it's at one, it will be performant. And when it's at two, it will be high fidelity. So because we have three levels, what we need to do now is go over here and the max value needs to be two. So you can see we got three steps to our bar. I'm going to go ahead and create a text to put up here. For the text, I'm just going to make it wider and taller. I'm going to name it graphics and I'm going to center it. I will increase the font for it. Now that we have this set up, go ahead and select the text and the slider, duplicate it and bring it down. Rename the text to be volume and select the slider. And over here, we're going to leave the max value in one. We're going to remove that it's whole numbers. And there we go. That's all we got to do for it. Now go ahead and create a new button. In my case, I'm just going to go ahead and copy the content from the main menu, which I'll drag inside here, and I'm just going to do a quick setup. Here you can see I have my two buttons. What I'm going to do is this one, I'm going to rename it to be back. This will take us back to the main menu. And this one over here, I'm going to rename to apply. What this will do is apply our new settings. Now with this being done, let's go over to the scripts folder. I already have a menus folder, but if you want, go ahead and create a new one. And we'll now create two scripts. One is going to be called settings and the other one will be called settings menu. Go ahead and open both of them. We'll first set up the settings script. Number one thing that we have to do is remove mono behavior because we won't need it. We're going to use this script as basically a data holder. Then go ahead and delete the functions and go ahead and create a public static int called quality level. Now go ahead and create a public static float called volume. I will give it a default value of 0.7. Save the script and let's move over to settings menu. On the settings menu script, go ahead and delete the default functions. We then need to add two namespaces. The first one is going to be unityengine.ui. So go up here, copy this, paste it, and add .ui. The second one will be the audio, so go ahead and paste it again and do .audio. Now go ahead and create a serialized private slider. Call it quality slider. Next, we'll go ahead and create a serialized private slider for the volume. This will be called volume slider. Then go ahead and create a serialized private audio mixer. I will call this mixer. The way this is going to work is the audio mixer will assign it to our audio source. That way our audio source takes the volume from here. We can now go ahead and create our start function and we're going to leave it empty for now. Next, go ahead and create a public void called refresh settings. Execute this function on start. 
then go ahead and create another public void called apply. We'll begin with the refresh settings function. Over here, the first thing that we have to do is assign the default values to our sliders. So we're going to do quality slider dot volume equals settings dot quality level. Then we'll do the same for the volume. So volume slider dot value equals settings dot volume. Then we'll execute the apply function. Basically, what we're doing in this function is assigning the default quality and volume values from our settings class over to our sliders so that they are synchronized. On our apply function, we'll actually do the opposite of the refresh settings. Instead of applying the settings values over to the sliders, we'll apply the slider values over to the settings. So for this, we're going to do settings.qualityLevel equals, and then we're going to do two parentheses, and we're going to do int. The reason for this is because the slider value is always a float, so we want to cast it to an int because our quality level is registered as an integer. So we're going to do quality slider dot volume. Then we're going to do settings dot volume equals volume slider dot volume. We then need to apply the actual settings to our game. So what we're going to do next is we're going to do quality settings dot set quality level parentheses, and inside here we're going to pass settings dot quality level. Then we'll do mixer dot set float. And on the first value, we're going to do a string, which we'll call master. Now, remember exactly how you spell this, because this is going to be very important. After the quotes, we'll do a comma and we'll pass mathf dot log 10 to get the logarithmic value. Then we'll do the parentheses and we're going to pass settings dot volume. And after the first parentheses, we'll multiply by 20. And with this, we're done with our scripts. Let's set up everything in Unity. Back in Unity, the first step is to assign the settings menu script over to the options menu. Over here, you can see we have the option for the quality and the volume sliders. Go ahead and drag them in. Then we can do this one of two ways. One, you can use the actual apply button. And over here, we can do on click. We're going to do a plus sign. We'll drag the options menu game object, which has the settings menu script. And where it says no function, click on it, settings menu, and execute the apply function. This is the way that I prefer it. Now, the other way to do it is over on our sliders, we execute the function instead so that every time we change something, it automatically applies. What you would do is the same process. Select the slider, plus sign, drag options menu in, then execute the apply function. I personally don't like this way, especially with the graphics, because it can sometimes like just freeze the entire game. So I prefer to keep it on, a, on an actual button. But that is up to you how you want to do it. The next step is to not create our actual audio mixer. For this, we'll go over to game. I'm going to create a new folder, which is going to be called sounds. And inside here, right click, create, create an audio mixer. I'm going to name this main mixer. Go ahead and double click on it. Now you can see this will open the audio mixer tab. Don't worry, this is not that complicated. It's actually quite straightforward. What we're going to do is first select the, max, the master. Over here on volume, we want to right click, expose volume of master. Then on the expose parameters, you can see here, it's just called my expose parameter. We're going to right click, and we're going to rename it to the exact name that we passed over here on the string for master. So in my case, I called it master with a capital M. Now go back to your project window, select the options menu and assign the main mixer. Now, in the case for the actual sound, the way we have to set it up is I'm going to go over here to the main menu. I will add a component called audio source. Over here where it says output, you're going to click over here and select master. And then for the audio clip, just put whichever sound you want. I already have one. Once you have your sound, go ahead and assign it over to the audio clip. But before we can test it, we need to do one more thing. Go over to your volume slider. And for the minimum value, we cannot have it be zero. So we're going to do 0 0.001. The reason for this is because if you put it at zero, when it goes all the way down, the volume will go back up. We'll now go over to our back button. And down here on click, we're going to hit the plus sign. We're going to drag the options menu in. And in this case, we'll do game object set active and we'll pass the value to be false. So just leave it as it is. Now you can go ahead and disable the options menu. The last thing that we need to do before we can test is select our options menu. And we're going to go ahead and click the plus sign and we'll drag the options menu in and we'll do the same thing. Game object set active, but in this case, it's going to be true. Go ahead and save it. Before we test the game, there's one thing that we need to make sure. Over here, I made the mistake that my graphics text, it's actually over the slider bar which means I cannot move the slider bar. So make sure that the height of it, it is not taking the actual slider bar. Now on our game, you can see that if I go ahead and click options, it shows the menu. And if you look closely, you can see here that the volume is at 0.7 when originally we left it at zero. 
so it is loading the default values. If I now go ahead and change the settings, lower the volume and click on apply, you can see that the settings are applied and the volume actually changes. If I click on back, we're back to the main menu. So there you go, here you have a fully functional options menu system. If you guys liked the video, hit the like button, consider subscribing and leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next one.